Okay, the Seventh Day Adventist Health Study number two. We're always told it claims that red meat intake is associated with increased mortality. Is it though? Let's look at the paper. Stick around. Right, how many times have you been told that the Adventist Health Study number two suggests that increasing meat consumption is associated with increased mortality? I know I've been told that lots of times. How many times have you actually read that paper? How many times have you looked at the data yourself? How many times have you analyzed it to see whether it really does say that? Let's do that today. Right, materials and methods, what did they do? They followed 73,000 odd people by way of respondent survey follow-up and keeping track of the records of deaths occurring. So what they have not done is control this population in any way. There are no um, selection criteria other than self-selection by way of how much meat these people report they are eating. The groups are not equated, they're not counterbalanced, they're not true random samples. There's no experimentation going on here. There's no control over all sorts of variables that can get its way into an inveigle and effect over the outcome variable, thus uncoupling the ability of any such of these kind of studies to inform us on cause and effect in any way, shape or form. They purport to be associative studies. But are they even that? Well, let's have a look at a typical study done by the fine folk at the Loma Linda University. Looking at the data collected in the Seventh-day Adventist study, health study number two, uh, as regards mortality rates and the consumption of meat. Five subpopulations. The zeroth quartile, first, second, third, and fourth quartiles of meat consumption. Zeroth meaning vegans. Right, so no control to speak of. People left to live freely under their own reconnaissance, purely an associative, what happened in these people kind of survey. Fine, no problem. Well, let's have a look at the main outcome data of this paper, which suggests that in the zeroth quartile, the vegans, there were 46,613 participants, of whom 5,376 passed away which equates to 11.53% of those participants. Okay, in the first quartile, we had 6,431 participants, 727 deaths, 11.30. So that's a decrease in incidence from 11.53 to 11.3. Okay, when you put in the first quartile of meat. Add more meat and become in a member of the second quartile, uh, the incidence of death goes down to six, goes down to 10.55. In the third quartile, it goes down again to 9.33. And by the time you are the meat eating champion, in the fourth quartile, the highest amount of meat consumption, uh, the, the incidence there was 9.3%. So we have a dose response, it seems, where the more meat you eat, the less you tended to die in this population. Fantastic. Uh, is that what this paper written by the fine folk at Loma Linda University, is that what it reports? Or does it say something different to that? It says something quite different. Uh, it says that the zeroth quartile, the vegans, had a risk ratio of one being the referent and then in the first quartile of meat consumption, the risk goes up to 1.16, or a 16% increase in risk. Uh, in the second quartile of meat consumption, we have 1.27 risk of dying because we've eaten so much more meat. And in the third quartile, we have 1.39, or a 39% increase in risk all the way up to a huge increase in the fourth quartile of meat consumption, indicating that our risk of death is 1.58. Pardon? How does this how does this come about? Well, it's a thing called adjustment. 
what the, basically what the procedure is is that you take your data set meat consumption and death shall we say and you subject that data set to a bunch of tests for the value of the correlation between death and things other than meat consumption and then what you do is you put all those single variant regressions back into your original sum as minus things off so you take out the value of correlations with other things that you select in a fairly arbitrary fashion. Basically anything that re artificially reduces the residuals around your trend line is in and anything that doesn't is out. So anything that agrees with you stays and anything that doesn't agree with your hypothesis doesn't. Okay, good. The problem with doing this is that the, the mistake that's being made here is that we are applying a causative value to the single variant regressions, all of them. Because what we're now doing is by xing each one of those out of the regression that we're, that we're going to now report as our adjusted regression, our, our adjusted risk, you can see how you can shift what you're reporting hugely from what was observed in reality on a fundamentally logically flawed assumption around causality. The first thing you learn in the first morning of your first undergraduate degree is that association cannot inform on cause and effect. And yet, multivariate regression is being used in that, in that way. So if a single variate regression cannot inform on cause and effect, what makes you think a multivariate regression is any more capable of doing that? It's not. It's false. It's ridiculous. And the reporting of this data set by these authors is nothing short of criminal and fraudulent. Let's, let's read their conclusion statement, just because. In the Adventist Health Study 2, we found relatively low levels of consumption of red and processed meat to be positively associated with all-cause and cardiovascular disease mortality. No, you didn't find that at all. You adjusted what you found to suggest that that's what you found because you wanted to, based on your arbitrary decision of what to, how to adjust and massage the outcome of this data set in a way that suits your theology. This is the furthest thing from science I have ever seen. This is incredible.